Supplementary elections is the buzzword this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, INEC has announced that in some areas where there was violence and returns could not be made, there will be supplementary elections. I'm sure this is more like um, great news for some people. Apparently, um, it's going to be done side by side along with the gubernatorial elections on the 9th of March. And uh, to be talking about this issue with us or talking about this development, um, we're going to be looking at lessons INEC has learned the pre from the presidential elections, mistakes they shouldn't make coming when well, we go for the uh, gubernatorial elections side by side, the supplementary elections, and in the studio. To discuss this with us, we have Edward Israel Aide. He's a communication strategist. It's good to have you in the Thank studio. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, He is a reputation manager. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. For All right. Me. So, um, Felicity, I'll let you have the floor. Like, the first thing that comes to my mind is, if there is a supplementary election, what happens to the declaration of Buhari as president? If, that, if the supplementary election shows that he may be he lost, will he now, will they give back the, the um, certificate, of, certificate return. of return? What plays out in this scenario? Let me start with yeah. you, Israel. Uh, uh, first of all, I think, I think it's just a safe face in uh, measure on the part of INEC. Uh, if we've already given someone the certificate of return, I would believe that you've concluded the elections. And if you're not coming and saying, oh, some elections didn't hold in some areas, you should have held those elections before coming on, uh, before coming to give uh, the certificate of return to whoever you declared the winner. So I think it's just a save, uh, face saving measure yeah, uh, on the part of I, I would take the question still <laughs> to you. Is it really necessary at this point? Because he said the margin was pretty small. Yeah, would you say it's because they're concerned about people feeling disenfranchised or, it, I, I or think, just perfunctory, like he's saying? I think that um, there's a part of that conversation that um, we've not factored in. Uh, there were three elections, actually, or there were three uh, positions during that election last week, Saturday, the presidential, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. Um, so for some areas, the um, votes that will come during the rerun is inconsequential to the president. But for the Senate, it's a major, it's, it could be a deal breaker for some people. For House of Rep, it could be a deal breaker for some people. So it is important for them to, but again, it is um, the statutory function of INEC to conduct election in every part of Nigeria. And you cannot disenfranchise some people from, you know, performing that civic duty. But INEC had, INEC had wished this away. I mean, I, I want to quote them directly. Earlier on, the INEC chairman had said that the figures uh, from areas where elections could not be conducted were not substantial enough. That's what he said, to impact mm on making a return exactly. or a rerun of that presidential election. So what changed? It's for the presidential election. But there's also something. Um, if I'm a party man sitting in the national headquarters, I want to know my strength in a particular place. The data is very, very important for future referencing. So do a rerun. Let me know what the strength is so that the next time I have to conduct an election there, I have something to refer to. There won't be a void. Again, the rerun for the presidential is inconsequential for the presidential because the constitution is clear, 25%, blah, blah, blah. And so he has fulfilled that, and it's because he has fulfilled but what that. What if there's a different result? It, it means it's still inconsequential. There cannot no, be no, a but, different but there result. Were, there's so many, several, I mean, there's several polling units. That's what I'm saying. With a huge number of people that could change the percentage. So let me, let me say something. By process, and what I know about the INEC process, you can't have more than 500 people in a polling unit. So bring all the numbers together, max it out. Let all of them vote for one person. Will he close that gap? No. It's like Sorry. you disagree. I, I, think, I think if INEC had done their job properly from the very start, we wouldn't be in this uh, situation right now where you need to do supplementary elections because most of the supplementary elections are being done because there were issues of uh, lack of security, uh, voting materials well, not that's getting not to. All violence, the etc. INEC officials, so to speak. So I'm because saying, like, if INEC is the electoral umpire, mm -hmm. they should have gotten ready for the elections. If you know that there are areas where they are prone no, to some would violent say attacks, you should have. Uh, you should have engaged with the security forces and said, okay, how do we curtail 
or how do we stop this incidence of violence happening in this area? So I'm saying, like, if INEC had been ready for their job having an issue, some of this, because we've, this is not the first time we're holding elections in Nigeria. Like, we held elections in 2000 and, uh, from 1999, 2003, 2007, 2011, INEC couldn't have possibly known that no. ballot papers were going to be burned. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in a cutter. But for instance, there are issues of ballot papers not getting to voting area, uh, vote, uh, polling time. units on time. Like you are INEC. You knew you postponed the elections for a week, saying that you had logistical issues. Now you postponed it, and on the day you postponed the elections to, you are still having the same logistical issues. So let's even leave the issues of security out of it. Let's so talk about polling, polling uh, materials not they, getting they did to acknowledge this the, during their meeting yesterday. Mm. They acknowledged delays in the commencement of elections in a number of polling units, which mm. necessitated the extension mm. of closing time. So yes, for, yes, for yes. instance, if they start by 11, they continue the process to maybe like four before they give a result. And in most of these places, they got results. But, I mean, no matter how you look at it, they couldn't have foresaw that people will intentionally, deliberately go to polling units, pick up the ballot boxes, smash them on the ground, and, you know, burn them, pop on them, and burn them. These are Nigerians. So, if, if we're blaming INEC so completely, uh, some persons might say that might be too... Uh, that would be a bit unfair. 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 unfair to them. I, I think that I don't even, I would blame my neck for in the first place, more shifting the election. And like I said before now, uh, outside here, that what was most painful about postponing the election was not postponing the election, was postponing the election 2.44 a.m. on the very day. <laughs> um, there's no way INEC would have, no matter, uh, unless we want to underrate <laughs> the power of human beings. There is no way they could have, you know, um, I do not the level of um, preparation that will have foster violence in mm. those places where we, we had it. I think that's the bigger problem that the whole country is facing. Um, but what is important now is to ensure that we do not have the problem that we had last week. Uh, it's uh, we already those places are already hot spot. I do not think they will continue to be a hot spot, to be very sincere, because the stakes are down. I think one of the reasons we had low voter turnout last week was because they moved the election. You know, um, you, so I, I do not think that it will be a problem. What I feel I next should focus on now is the governorship election because it's looking way more tensed. Yeah, that, the that's uh, something they are saying. What? Yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that's something they also addressed during the meeting. And we told, we have a conversation uh, with a voter education commissioner. Is it um, voter Usaze education? Uzi. Usaze yes. Uzi. Yes. I will listen to that and then we'll come back and continue with the conversation. Okay. Do you stay with us, please? Yes, the commissioner has issued a press release, a press statement, where he stated that there will be supplementary elections for uh, the National Assembly, that is Senate and the House of Representatives, for those constituencies of central district where the violence prevented the commission from deploying or violence affected certain areas such that it will have, it will have an impact on the outcome of the elections, final elections or results of those areas. So where the margin of lead is such that the difference of number of registered voters in those impacted areas will make a difference, then the commission is going to uh, conduct supplementary elections in those areas. And also in areas where the elections are declared inconclusive. So he's saying something about percentage. He's mm. explaining as to why INEC finally decided. For some Nigerians, now you're here obviously representing a certain section of Nigerians, do you think that this excuse for INEC to do this rerun or supplementary election is good enough for reason? Because he just, oh, you said it was to save face. But what face is INEC saving? Because, I mean, we're going to go into another election where we're still going to examine or weigh how, or if they even learned anything from what happened on Saturday. I think... And I'm going, to go, I'm going to go back to the 2015 elections right now. Uh, I think INEC hasn't learned anything from 2015 elections going into How the so? 2019 elections because uh, the thing about a uh, commission like INEC is like you need to work with data, you need to work with uh, trends, you need to work with insights. Uh, if you have seen certain trends, certain insights in previous elections, you should have been able to form a pattern that will guide how you approach 
elections or voter education or whatever it is that you want to do with uh, the populace in those areas. Do you understand? It's like political parties. They look at uh, in the southwest. We have uh, this support. So let's try this approach. You, you have to you have to work with data because. INEC is a numbers organization, do you understand? But uh, I feel that having looked at 2015 and seen some trouble spots, they should have been better prepared. Maybe it could have been the use of technology instead, do you understand? Because issues of uh, people snatching and burning ballot boxes, if, for instance, if we had something where there was e-voting, for instance, there will not be any... Well, that's an issue that is... Yeah, do you understand? I mean, that, there will not be any that's papers a, that's, a, that's a whole kettle of fish. I'm not saying that. Like, because we, because we have solutions. A, because, the, uh, because, you know, you can't run elections... Ab ab initio, if that's the best word, mm. you have to follow the, the law. And yeah. it, the Electoral Act does not admit e-voting. Yeah. So we can't, I mean, we only can <laughs> wish. Yes. All right, you, the meeting yesterday mm. was just not only to review what happened, but to know how they can be better for the governorship election, election that's so. coming up in a couple of days. And yeah. towards that end, I think we should also take a look at how prepared are they going to be, what lessons did they learn from this presidential election? Or let me rephrase that. What lesson do you think INEC should take away from mm -hmm. the presidential election? I'll come to you. Um, I think the first one will be to be very, very prepared. Let all voting material get to the polling unit in good time. Good time. Let us have, you know, a very strict standard operating procedure, so to speak, at the polling unit. One of the things that is exciting about the way we voted this year, which I feel like we, is a progress that you know should be mentioned, is the fact that right now you've, you are accredited and you leave the polling unit. What we used to have before is people loitering and all of that. And that is highway to problem. So you say people should wait and be responsible with their vote. That way, the officer, the you know, police officer, whoever is in that area, will have to be sensitive enough to see if the polling unit is getting tensed and can alert or call for backup if need be. So I think those are the things that are important. But, because Inek, the average but, but person, INEC is just an umpire. Their job description is very clear. INEC cannot, will not, <laughs> will never tell the police how to do its job. The police has its job cut out for it on that day. They need to examine. I mean, the police has always been in the elections. They should have known. They should know. In fact, they should have communication gadgets. The police ask for so much money so, for this election. So INE cannot also be worrying about what the police should do on so, election day. So, so let, me, let me draw a parallel. If you give an event company the 360 degree responsibility to organize your event, the, the event company probably don't, don't have cameras. But you've told them, I want to have this type of multimedia. They will go and get the people who can do that. If INEC needs to send a revised brief to the police, then they have to do that. Their responsibility is to deliver the election, like you said. It is their responsibility. So let INEC go and tell the police that from what we learned last year, uh, or last election, or last year, when people stayed XYZ time at the polling unit, these are the signs you start to see that the polling unit is getting tense. Tell your officers at every polling unit if you tick one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever boxes, please call for backup. That way, you're saving. So, for example, if, if you've come near anywhere that are violent or anything, they don't just come and happen once. Yeah, well, before you go for the battle, maybe uh, uh, Tomasa, you sound like the police is not actively involved in so, so, elections, so, so, like so, they are sleepwalking so, through it, so you have to I'll remind so, them. So, so let me tell you something. <laughs> the polling unit, right, that I walked by, by to vote last week, Saturday, I was looking out for the policemen there. One of them did not have a policeman. You know what they had? They had a traffic control officer there. He's a trained police officer. Because he's a traffic warden doesn't mean he's not trained. Well. Okay. So, <laughs> he wants to come in. He wants to say let's something. Okay. Let him say yeah. something. So what I was, what I, what I was going to say is, and I'm, I'm going to uh, support what Tubas was saying earlier on, is that the police is not an electoral uh, police. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Their primary duty is not to conduct elections or to safeguard elections. 
their primary duty is to secure internal peace. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? The role of INEC is to conduct elections, like 360 degrees. Do you understand? INEC has met with political parties, with security agents, with electoral observers, to brief everybody that this is what is going to happen, this is what we're going to do, and all that. What I believe that Tuboso is saying, and which I am also saying, is that at all this engagement, I next should have spoken with the security agents and said that these are the challenges that we anticipate that we would experience. And this is how we believe that you should be prepared for it. Because the policeman knows how to catch criminals primarily. He doesn't know uh, how to handle election issues. But a man who tags away ballot boxes is a criminal. That's a criminal offense. Exactly. But I'm saying that the, the dynamics of someone snatching ballot box and someone coming to snatch a car. A policeman can can understand snatching a car easily than he will understand snatching a ballot. A policeman understands no, the psychology of a criminal. Of a criminal, do you understand? Let's so even this issue um, in another from another dimension. Yeah. During one of the press briefings, INEC chairman when asked about, you know, uh, these hoodlums coming to polling units mm. and snatching in the presence of police officers. And then somebody suggested that maybe they should reconsider arming the policemen at the polling uh, units. And he said that's a conversation we would have after mm. the election is over. But with the tension, that seeming tension that's in the air, whether it's real or manufactured by certain quarters, we cannot really tell. But with the whole situation as it is at the moment, do you think that it might not be too early for them to experiment since mm. they said people originally requested for, for police to be disarmed. To be, to be, now so, that violence seems to be occurring, should they be armed? So, so first of all, first of all, I would like to say for the record that uh, most of the uh, issues about violence and intimidation happened were not manufactured. Like I experienced some. Do you understand? I experienced some. I uh, was in your state for the elections. Do you understand? I experienced some, and I saw how. People who just wanted to go and vote were being aroused and asked questions by security agents that should You're not saying be. saying they're manufactured? No, no, I'm saying that they are not manufactured. Are so, they like, real? The issues, they're real. They're real. Like, we saw videos, we saw all sorts of... But I'm saying that the, the issue of security agents being armed because of uh, elections. elections and all that, we need to look at it from the very beginning. Why? Are politicians bold enough? Why are they so desperate enough that they would risk the lives of people, voters, their thugs, or whoever, to get uh, some results? Do you understand? And I said this uh, in another interview earlier that the way to forestall the uh, the some of these things is we should use we should strengthen our systems. We should strengthen our laws. What uh, was said uh, in some quarters about uh, people who snag ballot boxes should be, uh, should be shot or maybe do so at the risk of their lives, do you understand? It's quite unfortunate because that is you using uh, brute force, where you can use systems and laws. For instance, like I said earlier, but it might be wishful, might be wishful thinking. If we had procedures, if we had technology in place that says that uh, if you vote this way, it is recorded immediately in this way. Then the person knows that coming to snatch a ballot box is not going to change. The, 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 it's not going to make any difference. Do you understand? So the 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 motivation to go and snatch ballot boxes or to harass people from voting and all that it's drastically. So reduced. maybe we should be pushing now for that so, document so, that is on Mr. President's me, table so exact, to be signed. Shouldn't that be our priority? Long term. <laughs> Long term. Long term. In the immediate term. What, is, what are we doing with intelligence? I'm not a police officer, but I can already, with going by trends, tell you the flashpoints. Going by trends, tell you the flashpoints in the next election. That, oh, these areas, you can bet there will be trouble there. Or these areas are susceptible to trouble. So do you need people to be armed at the police unit? No. With the numbers of police units we have? No. You know the flashpoints. Ensure that there are people who are ready to stop trouble. You see, the criminals, they have intel, the criminals. So use intel. You already know. It's, it's, it's like even the average citizen that is in tune with what is happening in your environment. <laughs> you already know that place you don't pass there at night. That place, that's where the bad boys are. <laughs> so intensify intels. Use intels to predict and prepare security forces to act with intel. That's why I'll go back to what I said then have procedures. So you want to put the people who are well trained 
to handle things in those areas so that when, once you start, they won't come these guys, they don't come all at once. You probably see one who will come and scan and the gather, area. And, and then gather. before you know, they will come. So once you see, you're seeing strange movings around, you want to start to tell, okay, one tick in the box. The second tick in the box, oh, these guys are here. And if you've already created, you know, um, a network around the flashpoint, the response time of the security agents are shorter. You are able to reduce the problem because sometimes the, the guys they use, so they, 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 the network of the criminals is not so large. So the same guys who acted in this police unit are most likely going to be the one that will go to the next one. So if you are, if they are battling to go, to run away from one police unit, you've come, you've you know put that trouble to one police unit, and then it doesn't yeah, start to spread. Yeah, let me let me take it from this angle. Before all of these violence erupted during the election, we had repeated assurances from our security agencies that they have everything under control. Yeah. So this would imply in, I mean, to any ordinary person, when yeah. the security forces say, we know all the corners, yeah. we don't, if you pretend you wear uniform and you're not an officer, we will know, you know, the sound, the sense, the confidence that they exuded made a lot of Nigerians maybe relax a yeah. little. So if the security agencies keep saying that they have the situation under control and then citizens are saying these are flashpoints that need to be paid attention to and nothing seems to be born, uh, done rather what do we do in such a situation because lives are at risk so i'll go back to what um edward said is the punitive measures that has to be in place you know for whoever is caught you know um, um doing something that is wrong because like i said if the average citizen is in um is has enough intel as surface as it might be to know that these areas are flashpoint then the security agents they know more let's not even kid with them they know more sometimes it's the ability to something. act sometimes it's because someone has paid for some people to look there that's a hefty allega yeah. allegation okay, so, 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 you're so, so, saying so. that most of us of course is what's discussing are you saying that most of our security agents are compromised when it comes to the polls no that's not what I'm saying. But, but you but, said but, they but, may but, have been paid. Yeah, but, but they is that may mean? have been paid. But it's a legitimate yeah, an allegation also they made may. by the opposition. But, but, may. Yeah. but there's a legitimate there's a legitimate uh, uh, there's a legitimate claim there if you even talk to average Nigerians on the street who for for time immemorial have felt like maybe the elites, the political class, that they have a lot of uh, security agents in their pockets, not even related to elections right now. They understand. People believe that uh, the political class and uh, rich politicians and all that, that, they have security agents in their pockets. So it's a legitimate claim that if you ask someone on the streets of Lagos that, oh, is this what you think happened? They'll probably tell you, oh, yes, they paid them, that's why they looked away. Do you understand? But not to say that that is what happened. Do you understand? But some things uh, are just beyond belief. When you see uh, an armed policeman, at a polling unit, and then someone who they say is a local talk. And I want to believe if the residents, like the one that happened in Okota, you could see that the residents knew the person. They were calling the person's name. So if the residents knew this talk or this hoodlum, do you want to tell me that all the police station in that area do not know about this person? Really? And did not anticipate that this person could uh, cause violence me, on election day. That's what I'm saying. Let's what not, do we now do in such a scenario? Because we need we need to have some faith. Like everybody is saying, um, have some faith in INEC. INEC, yeah. they're doing their best for you know whatever yeah. reason. And then the security agency say, don't worry, be, relax. <laughs> you're secure. Yeah, yeah. You're secured. Go and cast your vote. Yeah. And then you go out. And there is chased. the violence. So what do we need to do? Or should I say, what does the IGP need to do? to rewire the thinking of these officers so they know, is it to increase their remuneration? Because we have just a few days to get to the next election. Is it to increase their remuneration <laughs> for the so, duration of the election? So, so I, don't... I think that, you know, that route, um, there's a lot of work that it's needs to be done. Uh, no, just for, let's say, just for the election. Just I for this coming election. Short term. So I'll, I'll, short term. Let me, I have a reference point. So I saw a video, I think somewhere in Lagos, I don't know, where, you know, there were this you know, looking like criminals or thugs, you know, trying to, you know, st they were not even trying to steal the ballot boxes. They were trying to empty the ballot boxes. Everybody, uh, definitely, they were, I saw only one policeman trying to handle three people, almost trying to grab the box yeah, from them. He was yeah, grabbing yeah. them now, and so taking I'm saying back, that but he was one person. One person. 
I, 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 well, we've seen that's, American that's another movies. argument so for that's, arming them. Don't, if, I'm not, don't even have, even from, because we, we, if saw, we had watched had documentaries. Gun, just shot into the air. They, would, they might still not run. They might still not run. But I'm saying, we've seen movies and all of that. Right there, that man is outnumbered. So the question I'm asking is, so where's the backup? Did he call for one? But you know, but legally Did there is supposed one? to be security men who are armed around a few meters away a from. In the, uh, that yes. was the impression we were given. But, but this happened, and, and just as many people have said, what happened in Okota was not something that happened in a split second. It happened for a long time, and then before you could light, I mean, you just don't show up and light a fire. Hmm. They, they took time. So if there was a communication of sorts, the backup should have shown up. So, so we are re-echoing what I'm saying. <laughs> it appears like we're not prepared it to be sincere what and to, to play the devil. We've been just re-enacting the challenges. Mm. Like in a short term <laughs> basis, yes. what or should be forward. the solution? <laughs> I, I because think, people are still going to go out to cast their vote. Yes, I think they need to be reassured. I think we, we, we are leaving out something that I said in the beginning, which is let's go back and in the few days we have, have something that I would, for the lack perhaps of a better word, an SOP for those flashpoints. If X, Y, Z happen, do X, Y, Z. And then come back and reassure people. Do, there's a lot of engagement that needs to be done in, in those areas. You, if you already know the hideout of the people that can potentially cause trouble, you, don't, you probably have to go and, when, so sometimes when they see the amount of, you know, you know, um, 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 force that you bring to that place. You might want to, you know, use different methods to reassure people that you have enough security to protect you here. Come out and vote. You will probably want to go on a peace um, um, engagement. So, for example, a bit of that is already happening in Lagos because it almost, I mean, the situation in Lagos was going tribal, you know. So you want to call the two sides together and say, it is not tribal. Let's focus on what we have to do. So those are the things that I'm seeing. The process in place, reassure the people where, um, reassure the whole nation, but put a bit of focus and strength on the areas where you know there were problems last um, last yeah. Saturday or where you where you know are known to be very problematic. Yeah. Engage you know the stakeholders in those areas to let them know that you know things are going to be fine. Perhaps I don't know. I can't teach you know the security agencies their force, but maybe you want to use secret. You know, policemen. Uh, so, uh, policemen. Ayide, I'm just wondering, the time that we have, is it yes. even enough time to get anything done? I mean, someone, I think it was her who was saying something about reorienting their minds. I mean, is that even possible? That's a long time. That's what I said. Uh, I'm just wondering, so what, time whatever it is that we're, 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 we're thinking of as a solution, is five days so enough time? So I'm, think, I'm thinking uh, a, a quick solution, which I think the Nigerian, I believe the Nigerian security uh, security remember. agents, I think they, not as if I think, I believe that they have the capability. They know these things. They understand. They know these things. Osho, they used to be an odd, uh, used to be an odd spot for armed robbery. After a while, okay. it sort of died. Mm -hmm. Because it's not as if you see police, armed policemen there all the time, but something happened. Do you understand? Thank so I'm saying, if it needs more intelligence work, if it needs more uh, actual working, if you have identified the flashpoints, you know that it is not all of Lagos that you are going to have people coming to snatch ballot boxes, all that. You know the areas that are flashpoints. If you need to take some policemen from places like VGC and Ikoi, where you know that is uh, early to our voting there, there will mm. not be any issues there. If you, you can put your NSCDC and all those guys there and take your real policemen and take them to places like Oshoji, like Okota and all that. And uh, just to uh, just to uh, say something about what Tuboso said earlier, it is not the peace meeting that is being called presently. It's not even the police that is doing that. It is somebody who is sitting down in Oshodi who has become a law unto himself calling people that let me come and do peace meeting it is the police who is supposed to bring all the warring uh Party. parties together and say this is what we have heard this is what we have seen going forward these are the uh rules of engagement it is it shouldn't be one faction who has now become a law unto himself saying that oh let's come and do peace meeting the police can do it i believe that the police can do it if the if the president is coming into town impromptu in three days they will secure they will secure the area do you understand? So it's a case of just asking themselves that these areas that we have identified in the last election that are flashpoints, this is what we are going to do. We are going to possibly take uh, 
policemen from some areas where we know that there are not going to be any issues. Do you mm. understand? Like, you don't expect that uh, there will be any violence happening inside VGC or maybe in uh, Banana Island or places like that. You can deploy uh, maybe the traffic policemen, the NSCDC guys, just to have a presence of security on ground. Then you can take your federal SARS and It your sounds like you're making a list of what these people do. Take your soldiers and what the NSCDC is capable of doing. <laughs> take them. Oh, oh, no, no, so, <laughs> Past this segment for yeah. now. The conversation will continue. We'll be right back after this break. Do stay with us.